Hello, and welcome to the first tutorial on task creation in RR Bench. In this first video, we're going to be creating a very simple reaching task. Along the way, we'll learn the very basics of task creation. So let's hop right in. I have a fresh install of RR Bench open in PyCharm here, and a terminal down here. So let's navigate to the tools directory, which I'm already in, and we're going to uh, run the task builder. So Python 3 task builder.py. This will open up Coppelia Sim. What's nice about RL Bench is that most of the task building actually happens inside Coppelia Sim, which is a much more kind of user-friendly way than uh, kind of building scenes directly in XML or Python. So what we're looking at here is the uh, RL Bench scene. The scene itself uh, is consistent across all the tasks. Uh, so here you can see we have four cameras, We've got two over the shoulder cameras, uh, a front facing camera and then a wrist camera. These give you uh, RGB, depth and segmentation masks. Uh, this here is the workspace, the outline you can see here. And when tasks get loaded in, they get placed in the center of the workspace. So uh, before we uh, proceed, those aren't, that aren't familiar with Capedia Sim, then I highly recommend spending about an hour or two going through some of the tutorials. Uh, I'll have a link in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started on the uh, task creation. So let's uh, close this model browser and put Copedia Sim over here. So we'll head to the terminal. What task would you like to edit? Uh, reach target tutorial one. Uh, the task does not exist, so yes, we would like to create it. So two things have happened. Firstly, there's a new dummy node in the scene, which you can see here. So any objects that we create should be a child of this dummy. Uh, and we shouldn't need to modify anything outside of this dummy. Uh, secondly, if we look at the RL bench folder and go into tasks, you'll see that a new file has been created, reach target tutorial one. And this has been created along with some boilerplate code. So let's just quickly go through this file. Uh, all of the tasks inherit from the task class. Um, and there's a bunch of methods that we can override here. It's just some of them, the most important ones. Um, we have init task, which is called at the beginning of every single uh, task. Um, that is when we first load in the task. Um, init episode gets called at the beginning of every single episode. So this will be, uh, be called relatively frequently and it gets passed in a variation index. So in this simple uh, tutorial, we're going to be looking at one variation of reaching a red target. So we'll, we'll always expect this to be a, a zero coming in. But in later tutorials, we'll look at um, where we can have multiple different variations per task. The variation count is simply how many variations this task has. So for our case, we're going to have it as one. So we can actually delete this to do right now. Um, step is something that's called every single time the simulation is stepped. And this is handy for when you want to do some advanced things like moving objects dynamically every time the simulation is stepped. Um, but we won't actually need this for this task, so let's get rid of it. Cleanup is called um, at the end of an episode. So this is handy for if we do any uh, kind of procedural objects loaded in or um, any sort of like texture loading we can then unload here. Again, we won't be needing this for this simple tutorial. So let's go back to uh, Coppelia Sim and start building the task. So we'll create a sphere, and this is gonna be the target. So add primitive shape sphere, and we'll just keep this the, the default size. The sphere, as you can see, is appear down here. So we'll just drag this up so we can see it and put this somewhere sensible in the workplace. That's good enough. So we're gonna make this a child of our um, task dummy. And we're gonna color this, we'll color this red. So just color, ambient diffuse component. We'll wrap the red all the way up and bring down the green and blue. We also want to make this um, non-dynamic and non-respondable because we want the arm to be able to pass through it. 
The next step is to find a waypoint so that Power Bench can produce demonstrations for our task. As this is a simple uh, reaching task, we only need one waypoint and it needs to be at the center of the sphere. So we'll create a new dummy and call this waypoint zero. and make it a child of the sphere and put it at the center of the sphere by changing the relative translation to be zero. There we go. The waypoint is now at the center of the sphere. We need to strictly follow this naming convention. Um, if there were to be another waypoint, for example, then that would need to be called waypoint one. If you look at the gripper, you'll see that there's a dummy node. At each waypoint in the demonstration, the robot sets the waypoint pose as the target pose, and then aims to find a path so that the pose of this gripper dummy will be equal to the waypoint pose. So if we drag this waypoint out, so you can see it, the waypoint zero. You'll notice that the uh, rotation is quite different to the uh, gripper dummy. So what will happen is when we collect the demo, it'll actually end up flipping around about 180 degrees and pointing upwards. So we don't want that. So we actually, uh, for this demo, we'll just get it to be the same uh, rotation as this dummy node here. So what I'm gonna do to do that is just look at the pandas hierarchy, grab the, find the panda tip. I'm actually going to just drag this waypoint down here to make it a child of the panda tip. And I'm gonna set the relative uh, uh, rotation to be, uh, or orientation to be um, zero. There we go. So we've got the exact same now rotation as the uh, panda tip. And now we can drag that waypoint back to be a child of the sphere. And we can set the uh, position to be, uh, zero relative again. So this is the center of the sphere. We can now go to the command line and start the simulator with plus and get a demo with D. Nice, and we haven't even written any uh, code yet. So um, what we can do now is try getting a different uh, episode and then get a demo again. Now you'll notice here that it actually rotates. Uh, and the reason is that the task will be placed, uh, will be randomly translated in the workspace and rotated on the Z axis. Um, so it will actually rotate because the uh, task root has been rotated. But we can easily stop that from happening by jumping to the Python file and limiting the task rotation. And we can do that by overwriting the uh, base rotation bounds method and setting this to be zero. So what we're saying here is that the task rotation um, should be uh, minimum zero, all zeros and maximum all zeros. So it won't rotate at all. So if we were now to uh, stop the simulator and restart it, this is going to now reload the Python file in and we can now get a new episode and get the demonstration. And you'll see that actually the rotation is very minimal. So what we are missing now is a way uh, to tell our bench what it means to complete the task. We'll first start by placing a proximity sensor around the sphere. So let's load in a proximity sensor. No, proximity sensor of cylinder type. And we'll make this a child of sphere and we'll set the relative position to be zero. Okay, so that's not quite the shape we want. So what we'll do is we'll modify the offset range and radius of the volume parameters so that it pretty much covers our sphere. So that's, I think, good enough for now. Now we'll head to the Python code and do some wiring. 
So we'll first start with init task. And we will first grab a, the proximity sensor. And we call this, oh, let's just give this a better name, success. So this proximity sensor, we're using Pyrex to get objects from Copedia Sim. And now we want to register a um, success condition. So we'll do self dot register success conditions. This takes in a list of success conditions. Well, we only have one and that's that the gripper is detected by the success sensor. So there's a de uh, detected condition that we can use in our bench. We'll import this. And we want to say that the robot uh, arm tip is within uh, this success sensor. It's been detected by the success sensor. And also, uh, we don't need to do anything for any episode. We've only got one variation, but we uh, do need to return some verbal descriptions of this task so that people who are interested in, say, the NLP side of things can uh, use this task as well. So for example, uh, one example could be reach the target or the red target. And another could be reach the oops, reach the red thing. Once we're all done, we can head to the terminal and run the task validation. This will check if the task is feasible across many episodes and variations. Great, the task is now ready for a pull request. When you make a pull request, it will automatically kick off the continuous integration build and test your task along with all the other RL bench tasks. In the next tutorial, we will look at making this task more complicated by more adding more than one variation and adding distractors.